What do you do for a labral tear in your shoulder? If you've been diagnosed with a labral tear in your shoulder, it can be kind of scary. Number one, just knowing that you have a tear in your shoulder and not really understanding what it is or seeing that on an MRI and wondering if you're gonna need surgery. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'm gonna explain all about labral tears in the shoulder. What are they? What's the treatment for them? Are you going to need surgery? And what do you do about it? Now, if you find this video helpful, give it a like or thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our other future videos. So first of all, what is a labral tear in the shoulder? First of all, what is a labrum at all? The labrum is a little uh, ring of cartilage that lines your shoulder joint. You picture your shoulder joint like a ball and socket, kind of like a golf ball sitting on a golf tee. The labrum is a ring of cartilage that surrounds that T. It makes the socket a little bit deeper and helps keep the ball stable within the joint. The shoulder is a really, really mobile joint. We can move it in all kinds of different motions, but joints that are really, really mobile, they sacrifice stability. And so it's quite easy for a shoulder to dislocate. And that's oftentimes how a labral tear gets caused. There are a couple of different things that can cause labral tears. One of them is a traumatic thing like a fall or a dislocation. Some of them are from overuse, for example, in sports, and some of them are more degenerative. They happen over time and they're sort of a normal feature of aging. So that first type, the type of labral tear that comes from falling on an outstretched arm um, or some other type of traumatic injury to your shoulder, for example, like a quarterback who gets hit when their arm's back in that position and the ball pops out a socket of the shoulder, that can cause a tear to the labrum called a Bankart lesion. Those are more common in younger people, particularly more active people who are involved in uh, sports or other things where they'd have those type of traumatic accidents. Now in younger people, like age 20 or less, oftentimes those can cause instability in the shoulder and sometimes disabling instability where they have repeated recurrent dislocations. And so for people who have dislocations of their shoulder age 20 or less, sometimes surgery is actually the best option for overall long-term longevity of their shoulder as they go through their life. But if you have a traumatic dislocation of your shoulder, for example, you fall on ice in your adult years, you don't necessarily always need a surgery for that. And we'll go a little bit more into that later. Now, the second type of a labral tear that you can have in your shoulder is called a SLAP lesion. And SLAP, S-L-A-P, is an acronym. It means superior labrum from anterior to posterior. And what that means in you know, more normal terminology, not medical terminology, it means a tear on the top of your labrum, the superior part of your labrum. And it runs from anterior, from the front to the back. So it's a run... It's a tear that runs from the front of your labrum over the top to the back of your labrum. Now that oftentimes happens in overhead athletes, people who throw or play volleyball, swimmers, where their arms up overhead and they're doing a lot of repetitive activities with the arm overhead, usually at a fairly high level of force. Your bicep tendon, part of that actually attaches up to your labrum and that repetitive force from your arm can tug on the labrum and it can tear the, the upper part of it or the superior part of it. Now that can create problems when you're doing things at high force that repeatedly pull or tug on that labrum. And sometimes you can need surgery for those, but a lot of times just conservative treatment like physical therapy is good to help those types of labral tears as well. Now the third type of labral tear usually happens in people who are middle-aged to older. It's called a, a degenerative tear or a fraying of the labrum. And at that point, it, it kind of looks like a rope that's frayed, where there's just little parts that are kind of you know, dangling out. It's not torn completely through. And for most people who aren't in a high level of athletics, you can actually do pretty well with conservative treatment for just a degenerative labral tear. But if you happen to have shoulder pain and your doctor takes an MRI and you see the word tear or labral tear on your MRI, you may get kind of worried about it and think, gosh, a tear sounds really bad. Um, you kind of think in your mind rotator cuff tears, which everyone talks about, and think that you may be destined for surgery. But if you have a degenerative tear of your labrum or a fraying of your labrum, you've got really 
pretty good odds to get away without needing a surgery on your labrum. So the next questions are, how do you know if you do need a surgery for your labrum? Well, if you have a labral tear that's shown up on your MRI, in most cases, the first line of treatment is going to be physical therapy or some sort of conservative treatment for it anyway. Um, a labral surgery, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is a pretty long extended recovery. So you don't want to jump into that right away when, in fact, most people can recover pretty well with conservative treatment. So you first do uh, six weeks of therapy. And if you're still having recurrent pain, recurrent disability, if you're an athlete, if you're not able to return to your prior level of performance, particularly if you're competing at a fairly high level of athletics, those would all be surgical indications. But if you don't need to get back to that level, if you just need to be able to do things like put away dishes and high cabinets, comb your hair, other overhead activities like that, you've got pretty good chances of getting back to those types of activities. And some people do really well that if you strengthen your rotator cuff, you increase the stability around your shoulder, you can even get back to some sporting activities without having to have a labral surgery. So what is the treatment for a labral tear? Well, if you have surgery for it, it's a pretty long extended process. Um, usually it's 12 weeks just for the labrum to fully heal. And if you do want to get back to some higher level athletics, that's usually a six to 12 month recovery process. So it's not like driving your car into the shop, getting it fixed up, and then you're back out on the field or back out on the court or back in the pool. You're going to be going at it for quite a long time. Now, conservative treatment of a labral tear is usually a shorter course than that, usually about six to eight weeks of physical therapy. And that focuses on the thing that the labrum is supposed to do. It focuses on giving you more stability around the joint. So again, the labrum lines the outside of the shoulder. It helps hold the ball in the socket and give you more stability that you can still move, but you're not going to dislocate your shoulder as you move. And so the focus of uh, conservative therapy or physical therapy for a labral tear in your shoulder is being able to move your shoulder and shoulder blade together in coordination. That when you're doing athletic activities, it's never really with your arm. You're always moving your shoulder blade and your arm in combination with each other. So it's regaining that coordination. It's developing the strength of the rotator cuff muscles. And the rotator cuff muscles, their primary job is to pull the ball into the socket and help keep it stable there, help keep it from popping out as you move your arm. Now, I've got another video totally dedicated to rotator cuff strengthening, and I'll link you to that for more suggestions, but kind of the bottom line is it's more than just doing band exercises back and forth like this. That Really, we don't operate much like this with our arm at our side, and the labrum um, is at most risk when you're in an overhead position anyway. So you need to be able to strengthen your rotator cuff, not just at your side, but in dynamic positions and particularly with your arm up over your head. So I'll link you to that video for more information on that type of treatment. Now, if you're looking for something that you can get started with right away at home, what I would recommend is just learning to move your shoulder and your shoulder blade in combination with one another. So when you're raising your arm overhead, it shouldn't be all just arm. Your shoulder blade should come up at the same time as your arm and then come down with your arm. So usually it's about a two to one ratio of moving your arm to one moving your shoulder blade. So moving the arm and shoulder blade up together and moving the arm and shoulder blade down together. And so that's a good first line of treatment. Then you can progress that into other activities like when you're throwing, moving your arm and shoulder blade together. As far as strengthening, like I said, you need to be able to strengthen your rotator cuff and keep the shoulder stable above 90 degrees. So once you can get your arm up to this angle, doing just rotation exercises like this, where you're picturing your arm rotating around the axis of your upper arm. You see the elbow's not moving a whole lot. It's staying fairly stationary. It's not back and forth like this type of motion. You picture just rotating around an axle and your shoulder blade shouldn't be coming forward or backwards much either. You should just be rotating in the socket like that. So those are two quick exercises that are good in general for labral tears. Again, there's a lot of different types of labral tears. 
And there's a lot of different demands on labrums depending on whether you're just doing everyday activities or whether you're throwing, whether you're spiking, whether you're serving, whether you're swimming. And it's really best to see a professional and find out how you can get back to doing those things and learn exercises and drills that you can use to get back to whatever activity meets your specific needs. So if you do need some physical therapy for your shoulder and you happen to be in St. Louis, we'd appreciate it if you gave us a call at More for Life. We'll get you in, help you find out the quickest route to recovery and how to get you back on the field or back to the court or just doing your everyday activities as quickly as possible. And if you're outside of St. Louis but you found this video helpful, give it a like or thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for listening and have a great day.